guys. Thanks for watching. Well, I'm calling this video my favorite video of the entire year. I went and did it. I found some treasure, finally. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know I find some cool stuff from time to time, but one thing has eluded me, and that is a little piece of gold or silver jewelry. Well, that came to an end last week. And as excited as I was about the find, I am doubly excited about the story that came with it. It's an incredible story, and I cannot wait to share it with you. Guys, if you like these videos and you love these little connections to history that we dig up out of the holes in the ground, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. Only about 20% of the people that view my videos are subscribed. Or you could share the video or give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. All right, on with the find and on with the story that I know that you're gonna love. Well guys, it's a monumental day, I think. I don't know how long I've been doing this. <clears throat> Four years, five years metal detecting, and y'all know I've never found a piece of silver or gold jewelry. So you can guess what I'm about to show you. And I think it's silver, but I know it's awesome. Check that out. Is that silver, you think? Please be something silver. Is that maybe some sort of a pin thing? Well, I would drop it. <clears throat> I don't know, guys. Let me see if I can clean up the back a little bit and, uh, I don't know. Rang up high enough to be silver, but sure could be something else. Let's hope for some markings back there. And guys, I am in the club. Check that out. Some sort of little pin thing. That's it. That's my first piece of silver jewelry. I found, well... If we want to get technical, I found a military pin that was silver. Actually about uh, 50 feet from where I'm standing. Believe that or not. Did it say sterling right there too? No. And uh, yeah. Well, this is it though. First piece of jewelry. Still haven't found that gold or silver ring, but you know what? That's a nice little chunk of silver. I'll take it. Awesome. Feels good to be in the club. Anytime I find something interesting, I'm always hopeful that there's a story, a connection to history that I can share with you. And guys, the story behind this little silver pen, man, oh man, it connects directly to the rescue of 7,000 Jewish children from the clutches of a madman we know as Adolf Hitler. But the story really starts thousands of years ago with the nation of Israel. Of all the nations of the earth, I think Israel has been the most oppressed of all peoples. They have been attacked, enslaved, and removed from their homeland countless times. It started with the Assyrians, and then it was the Babylonians, and the Persians, and then the Greeks under Alexander the Great, and then finally the Romans around the time of Christ. Now, the Roman Empire does something that forever changes Jewish history. In AD 70, Rome destroys the temple, the one place that the Jewish people worshipped in Jerusalem. And then 50 years later, Rome levels Jerusalem itself and banishes Jewish people from living in the area. The Jewish people are scattered across the face of the earth. Now, in history, this is known as the diaspora, the scattering. So if you look at the, the globe, what you're going to find is that almost every single nation across the face of the earth has some sort of Jewish community there. Now, here is what is so 
peculiar about the Jewish people. Typically, when we see a nation scattered like this, what quickly happens is that that nation loses its identity. It is assimilated into the various cultures uh, wherever it settles. But Jewish people don't assimilate. No matter where they go, they tend to live in community with each other. They hold on to their heritage. They hold on to their traditions, and that makes them look different. Now, you should know by now that humanity has struggled with people that look different. We don't quickly accept them. While the Jewish people held on tightly to their heritage, and we can say that's an admirable trait, it caused them deep heartache throughout history. We see that no matter where they settled, many times they were summarily kicked out. Not because of uprisings or anything in particular that they had done, just because they were different. Now, in the late 1800s, a movement was born. And it was called the Zionist Movement. And this movement had a vision. It had a dream for statehood for Israel. The dream was that one day Israel could return to the homeland that it had not seen in 1,500 years and become an official state. Now, there was a family that was living in Russia in the late 1800s that immigrated to America, and they end up in Providence, Rhode Island. This was the Silverman family. Two of the sons in that family founded a jewelry business, and they called it the Silverman Brothers. One of those brothers was a man by the name of Archibald Silverman. Now, this was a very profitable business. Business was good. They made costume jewelry, and they did some silversmithing. Now, one day Archibald is walking through the office and a pretty young bookkeeper caught his eye. Her name was Ida, and they were married in 1900. Now, Archibald eventually becomes president of a bank. He's a wealthy man. The Silvermans didn't sit on their wealth, though. They had a deep passion for their people. They worked towards anything that would benefit Jewish people. They were humanitarians of the highest order. Ida served over in World War I in humanitarian efforts, and she saw what often was the plight of Jewish refugees in the midst of a war. And she worked towards making life better for them. She worked with founding uh, hospitals and health care. This woman worked tirelessly. And Archibald, he funded every penny of her efforts. Now, when I say effort, you need to understand just how hard she worked. From 1925 to 1940, Ida flew over 600,000 miles, speaking on behalf of this Zionist movement, speaking on the behalf of statehood for Israel. Guys, she spoke in every state in the United States, every province of Canada, Mexico, Central America, and many, many of the European countries. And her efforts bore fruit. Now, around 1930... There was a man coming to power in Germany by the name of Adolf Hitler. Ida and many others saw what was happening. They saw the trouble coming, and they set about trying to do something for the Jewish people in these European countries. So by 1938, there's this movement called the Youth Aliyah Movement. Now, here was what they were doing. The Youth Aliyah movement was trying to purchase land in Palestine. Basically, just one little plot of land after another, and they were establishing what were basically small villages. But there wasn't anybody living in them yet. The Youth Aliyah movement sought to take teenage Jewish children out of Europe, remove them from their families, and fly them to these areas of Palestine where they were taught how to live. They were taught how to farm, 
how to conduct business. The idea was is that if we could get more Jewish people back in the area of Palestine, that would just further efforts for one day possible statehood for Israel. So in 1938 and through 1940, Ida Silverman poured her efforts into this Youth Aliyah movement. Her goal was to raise a quarter of a million dollars for the resettlement of these Jewish children. And guys, by 1940, she had successfully relocated 7,000 Jewish children right in time to avoid the Holocaust. Many of these children left their European homes and they left their families and they never saw them again. 7,000 individuals. Do you know how many people are alive on the face of the earth today because of the efforts of Ida Silverman and people just like her? So this little silver pen dug up out of a hole in western North Carolina, it played its part. Somebody purchased it that put money into Archibald Silver's coffers and that money was used to support Ida Silverman in her efforts to rescue her people. That is awesome. To close the story out, I think, in a very beautiful, beautiful way, in 1948, the Zionist movement saw the fruits of its labor. And Israel, in a seven-day war which confounds military people and historians to this day, overwhelming odds against countries that had established militaries, the Jewish people won their independence and became, once again, the nation of Israel. Now, Archibald Silverman dies, and just a few years after his death, Ida moves to Israel, to the land that she had fought so tirelessly for, and she died and today, Ida Silverman is buried on the Mount of Olives. Guys, I find that story just amazing. This little pen, so, so meaningful. Hope you enjoyed it.